All right, there we go. I see you right in there. Got it. I suspect you're wondering what I'm up to. Well, I'm retrieving the suet feeder. Squirrels ran off with it and it looks like they emptied it out as well. But it's so cold today. Um, I've got some activities to show you inside. I think you're gonna enjoy this, so come along with me. Oh, it's lovely and warm in here. This is our potting shed down here at Greystone Gardens. Flowers are all doing well. Right, I've picked six activities I get up to sometime in the winter. So when it's cold and miserable outside, this is something you could think about doing. All right, let's start with number one, tools. I like to check on my tools to make sure this is not in great shape. But one thing I must show you is this handle. Now I will go through handles like eating ice cream. They would just break and not last long. But I came across a good old American company who makes a really solid fiberglass handle. So if you're gonna replace a handle, they're very easy to do. Uh, usually typically on a, a wooden handled hand tool, uh, they have a wooden shaft that goes into the metal there and they put a rivet on, you drill a hole, put the rivet through and hit the rivet and then it starts spreading out. The metal will move and spread out and tighten up. And to get rid of them, you just drill it out, knock the uh, rest of the uh, ferrule out and then you've got to hammer away at the old bit of wood. Sometimes that can be tricky. Like on this one, it has a collar over it. So you've got to knock the collar over and then I put a, use a large screwdriver and knock the wooden handle out and then you put your new handle in, drill a hole and put the ferrule in there. Okay, so what I do is I look at, I usually give my tools a bit of a, a clean, just getting the mud off. There's no point trying to be too perfect because the first time you use them. But what I will do with all my edge tools is put an edge on them, make it a little bit better. This is a digging shovel. It's a point on it all. It's good around rocky soil. Um, after uh, seasons of use, the edge has become a little bit blunt. And all I use is a really good file. And then I'm gonna put it down and then in one direction only, just sharpen it till you get a nice edge. I can feel it cutting the metal away and then work your way around. You could use a, an angle grinder, one of those spinning ones, but they tend to go so aggressively and the metal can get really red hot and almost melt if you're not too careful. So a good old file like this takes a few strokes and that tool will slice through roots, clay soil quite easily. And again, the same thing you can do with a, a lifting shovel. This one we're gonna sharpen from that side, but because you're using it against hard surfaces usually, it remains pretty sharp. But sharpening secateurs, hand shears, grass shears, they all can be done now. If you need to oil them, they can be done now as well. So my next little activity involves this device. Now this is a moisture meter. Perhaps the most underrated of all tools you can use if you've got houseplants. Basically, there's a long probe, there's a separated end piece, acts like a little electrode, and there is a scale here. Now you can save your plants. You can often the biggest killer of plants is not underwatering; it's actually overwatering. And uh, and when you've touched the top of this soil here, you think, "Oh, that's dry. Look how dry that feels. I need to give it some more water." But as I can see, I'm going to put this in so you get a good idea. And so the top part of the soil is dry, but as I push it in further, you can see the bottom is actually wet. It's on the highest reading on it. That plant does not need watering because there's plenty of moisture down below and that's where you want the roots to grow to. If you keep things watered all the time, you can induce a rot. And the other thing to realize, if you keep putting your probe in there and it never dries up, the plant may be sitting in water. The container may not drain or it's in a saucer full of water. So that's a good idea to get rid of that water. Uh, plants need oxygen as much as they need water and the water will take the oxygen space if you're not too careful. So there you go, moisture meter, great tool for your houseplant tool collection. When we come back, Paul has a few more indoor ideas and activities you can do on a cold winter's day. All right, activity number four. It's one I've done before, but I just want to put a reminder in there. 
Uh, your yard is full or your neighbor's yard is full of plants that are really almost bursting to get into flower in the spring. But it's cold outside, so they remain dormant. But you can fall them. I cut this this morning. This is a um, stem of a forsythia, the yellow bells that you have early in spring. All of these little buds here are flower buds because this is the same plant I took this one in three weeks ago. And going into warmth um, brings the flowers out fairly quickly. And you can have an endless supply because forsythia grow pretty aggressively. Another tip to do is when you've cut the branch from outside and you've got, if you've got a warm bath, you can drop them in like 80 degrees, 85 degrees, just to warm the whole thing up. And that tends to break um, the cycle, the dormant cycle, and then get it into a flowering mode. So there you are. You can try with any of the early flowering, uh, apple blossoms, cherries, anything that flowers early will come into bloom pretty quickly. The later blooming things like rhododendron, azaleas take a bit more time to do. All right, talking about blooms, well, your plants um, are looking at the days getting longer, and that often is a trigger to start growing again. So if you've got house plants inside, it's warm 72 degrees and the light is getting brighter, um, you might want to think of fertilizing your plants. And one of the nicest ways of fertilizing is to use one of these liquid feeds. Now, this is Schultz, it's a very famous one, um, and it's, you don't need much. What's nice about Schultz is not only does it have the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, it also has a lot of micronutrients that your plant might be deficient at. And all you do is squeeze after you've given it a good shake. Seven drops per quart. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one for luck. Yeah, <clears throat> shouldn't really do that. Follow instructions, give it a little swirl around, and then you can water your plants that are showing signs of growth. All right, for my final little um, tip activity, or just passing on knowledge, I don't know what to call it. Um, I've had a series of uh, Black & Decker tools now for years, and they used to run off the 18 volt, I think they were uh, nickel cadmium, one of the old style battery things, heavy batteries, and they never last very long. And after two or three years, the battery becomes dead. But I found out, just doing a bit of research, I thought, what a waste to throw a tool like this away if uh, you can't get the batteries. But it turns out they make these. These are adapters. And you can use one of the modern batteries, the lithium-ion batteries, which are smaller, lighter, and more powerful. Let me just show you how it works. And basically, the bottom mimics the old battery, and it slides in there. And it has an adapter on the top that takes the modern battery. Now, as long as the voltage is close, um, it should work, and it does work very well. These are for cutting things near the ground. Uh, it's got a safety jaw, jaws of life or jaws of death. I mean, and safety factor I like is that you have to be holding both handles together. And so you can cut things very low down. It protects you from the blade and probably gets about a five, six inch diameter tree cut up. So there you go, some tips to help you get through the cold, miserable months of winter. And another thing just occurred to me, lawn mowers. Now you're not gonna cut the grass now, we know that, but lawn mower repair services are probably short of work. And if you get your lawn mower to them now, you'll get it done quickly and it'll be all ready for spring because you know what happens in spring? You try and start your lawn mower, it doesn't start and you go down to repairman and he's got a backlog and you've got several weeks of waiting. So do it now and you might save yourself a bit of grief. So till next time, cheerio to then.